Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. And uh, I'm, I, this is really a very in-depth uh, message that we need to speak about. And there's no way we can cover all this information just in one broadcast. Uh, but we're going get, to get started with it. And I've already, of course, I've been touching on it because of destruction and things like that that we see that are, that's going on and different scriptures. And it really, this one is really inspired from second Peter uh, again, where like many other verses in the Bible that we've shared recently talks about a, uh, a destruction where both heavens and earth are going to be just totally wiped out. And there's a lot of folks out there that as they look at these uh, passages, they think of, uh, well, gosh, wait a minute. I thought that, you know, we're going to have a, a millennial reign. And I haven't really got into all that yet, but uh, I know my wife touched on it a little bit because of the, um, you, the scripture that's used there in the book of Revelation for millennium or a thousand, kileoi, and I may not be pronouncing that very well there, but... Um, Let's see right here uh, if I actually have it over here in the, um, I don't have it up on there right now, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. But at any rate, the word for thousand is actually an undetermined space of time. Let me just put that on there. Maybe I can pull it up real quick there. Uh, it's not what people think it is. And, you know, and so therefore you got to kind of, you kind of have to look at the scriptures. Um, Altogether, like for example, right here it says in Revelation 20, when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And here it is, kiloi, and it is a plural of uncertain affinity. Um, there's a lot of other uh, research out there in the Greek language that speaks about this, and but it becomes more apparent that it's not a specifically a thousand years in light of when we begin to look at the scripture about Christ reigning and things like that. Uh, and, and I'm wanting to kind of get into this because I'm afraid that we're getting uh, from the Darby Schofield lenses that so many of us have worn in our past or even present now. We look at these footnotes, we follow these out, we follow the uh, you know, there's a lot of people that have followed the different biblical scholars of today that are Darby Schofield type generated uh, uh, ministers and, and scholars. So therefore, we keep falling into that same um, category and failing to realize that there is a major, major events about to hit this earth. And I don't want people to be caught off guard. Uh, so, you know, let's just real quick. One of the things, too, that, that brings us to mind is the book of Revelation chapter 12. And we see like where it gives the prophecy about the, uh, you know, Christ ruling with a rod of iron. Um, and so people are waiting. They're like, OK, we're waiting for Christ to come and rule with a rod of iron. We, we have this Revelation chapter 12. Let's, let's just read uh, verses three to five real quick. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold, a great red dragon having seven head, ten horns, seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and to cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. That's, that's clearly speaking of Jesus Christ. Now, granted, John writes this. Jesus has already been born. You know, these things have already come to pass and, and, and already been done and gone. All right. But he is ruled. Christ rules now. He, he's not ruling in some future event. He was ruling now. And that's even what the scripture in Revelation uh, uh, begins to show us to, as well, that this child that was going to be born is going to rule with a rod of iron. Now, oddly enough, I found this too in the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms clearly is about the birth of Christ, just like what we see in Revelation. Okay, let's start with uh, this. And now we are, just so we know where we're at, let's just real quick scroll up here. Psalm chapter 2, right? The kings of the earth stand up. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. And that's exactly what they did. I mean, that's like at the birth of Christ when they, 
you know, when the wise men came to find, you know, to looking for, for Jesus and then, you know, Herod and all these others, they're out to come against him. But as we move down in Psalm chapter two, let's go to verse six. Truly it is I that I have established my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. Right? God saying he, he established his king. Upon his holy mountain, I will tell of the decree the Lord said unto me. Thou art my son. This day have I begotten you. All right? That's not, he's not speaking of Israel. He's talking about bringing forth a child right there. Clearly, Yahweh Ahmad Ali Baneata. Okay. You know, the Lord has said to me, my son, you, Ata, that's a masculine singular, just one person, not two or three, not a whole nation, as some like to try to say. Ani hayom yaldatecha. All right? So I have, I have brought you forth. I have birthed you. On this day, a single person, nothing, nothing more than Jesus Christ. Ask of me and I will give the nations for thine inheritance and the ends of the earth for thy possessions. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So when did that reign of Christ begin? According even to the, to the book of Psalms, when David writes about this, it writes, it shows that even the rule, ruling with the rod of iron begins at the birth of Jesus Christ. And he begins to rule and reign right then and there. Not waiting until everything comes later. This is going to happen now. All right, go on and watch what it says. Now, therefore, all you kings, be wise, be astonished, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Do homage and purity, lest he, be, lest he be angry when you perish in the way and when suddenly his wrath is kindled. Happy are ye that take refuge in him. Actually, it talks about kissing the sun, lest he be angry. I think that's why you have it in King James. All oh, this is about Christ, right? And then we look at Isaiah. What does Isaiah say? Therefore, my people shall know my name. Let's, let's look and see what chapter we're in here. We're right here. Isaiah chapter 52. Let's start with verse 3. For thus saith the Lord, you were sold for naught, and you shall be redeemed without money. That is clearly Israel being redeemed by Christ. For thus saith the Lord God, my people went down aforetime in Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now, therefore, what do I hear, saith the Lord, seeing that my people is taken away for naught, that they that rule over them do howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually all day is blasphemed. Who was ruling over Israel? It was a bunch of archons, Nephilim, uh, perverted devils is what it is. And people may not like that, but that's what exactly what it is. In fact, I was looking at, and you may not, you guys probably won't be able to see this on your screen, but I'll just tell you a little bit about it there. I have uh, right here one of the fragments from the Dead Sea Scrolls, and this is also part of that 4Q390 that's telling you about where it talks about being destroyed with meteorites. But it, it says that, um, that talking about the priest, that they had the Kohenim, says right there, Kohenim Ham. It's kind of hard to see. It's the one I have a little bit small there. All right, what what is it saying right there? This is another. This is one of these ones in the Dead Sea Scrolls where uh, Tobia Singer says that the word uh, seed is not plural; it's singular, uh, and, it can, and it's just zara, but not zarim. It is plural. Because in this case here, they have debased their seed or they have mingled. The priest mingled their seed and the priests, they were violent. Hamas. You know, you have Hamas over in, uh, in amongst the Palestinians. Well, according to, uh, and this is actually a writing from Moses uh, that was in the Dead Sea Scrolls. He's saying the priests were Hamas. They were the real violent ones. And uh, so we can, we see that. We see the scripture truly being fulfilled there. And it also shows that they had with their seed, and their seed is plural, Zarim, their seed, they mingled it. They mingled their seed with these fallen angels. Uh, so very, very telling. So 
Anyway, but we go on and we, we're reading here in uh, the book of Isaiah. Uh, I believe that's where we're at, yeah, Isaiah 52. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I even, he that spoke, behold, here I am. Okay. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger of good tidings that announces peace, the harbinger of good tidings, and that announces salvation that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. Now, if you recall, this is exactly the same thing in Malachi chapter 3, the prophecy that, that Elijah would bring, which Jesus refers to as John the Baptist, and saying, you know, he's going to make the crooked path straight and everything, but he also goes into almost the exact same verbiage right there, you know, about the feet of the messenger of good tidings. But when does that, when does God reign? When Christ comes on the earth. So the reigning of Christ began, has begun already. And this is why then we find like in the case of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, Paul is speaking about us reigning with him, but every man in his own order, verse 23, Christ the first fruits, afterward they are they that are Christ at his coming. Then come at the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power. That's why he has to rule with a rod of iron from the time that he came on the earth all the way down through. He's ruling with a rod of iron. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy they shall destroy is death. Okay, what, what is what does Paul say in Romans? And by the way, those that don't like Paul, let me remind you, uh, Peter in Second Peter stands up for Paul as a true apostle. Therefore, as by the offense, this is now we're in Romans chapter five, therefore, as by offense, one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by righteousness one uh, one of the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That is, sin hath reigned unto death. Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So, when Christ came, he put death down and now he's rules with a rod of iron as and we've, we've been told too what you know well, how's that go there he said uh, giving you power right power tread on the heads of uh, heads of uh scorpions and, and snakes right let me just see if i can find the right way of doing it um let's see Uh, and, and what is that? that? That's to be able to, um, let's see if I can find that right. Yeah, here we go. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Let me pop that up here for you real quick because you guys may not be able to see that when I'm jumping back and forth looking certain things up there. It doesn't always come up there. Luke, and uh, where were we at there? That's in Luke chapter 10. And we're looking at verse 19. Um, and this is part of our reigning. We reign over, over Satan. We reign over these kingdoms. But into who, whatsoever city you enter, they receive you not. Go your ways out into the streets in the same say. Um, wait a minute. Am I on the right? Yeah, we're Luke chapter 10. Make sure we're in the right place here. Luke. Oh, nine, verse 19 is where we got to get to. Sorry, I wasn't far enough down. Okay, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in, uh, in this, rejoice not that the Spirit is subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. All right, there again, Christ showing that we are already reigning, and Satan and his angels has already been cast down. So when people are looking at these prophecies in the book of Revelation and they're figuring like the Gog and Magog war, this is some future event that's going to happen and we're going to reign with Christ for a thousand years on, on the earth at that point there. No, you reign now. And the problem is, is 
what's about to happen is where Satan is allowed to deceive once again, and that deception is already begun. Why? Because the believers have given power unto the beast that we find in Revelation. You gave up your power, you gave up your authority in your seat. But you're supposed to have power to tread on the heads of serpents and scorpions. Did you forget who Jesus called the serpents and scorpions? Have we forgotten Matthew 23? Have we totally neglected these scriptures? Right? Matthew 23. How, how was that again? Let's just pull it up just as a reminder because he's given you power to tread on the heads of scorpions and that and so forth. And then we t t tend to forget, forget about all this. You know, here it is. Verse 33. Fill, verse 32. Fill you up in the measure of your fathers. He's talking to the Pharisees uh, and, and Sadducees. You serpents, you generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? All right. So you're given the power to tread on serpents, scorpions, vipers, etc., which are that Nephilim bloodline, and, and you're not doing it. No, instead now we have fallen for these false prophets that have come up that tell you, no, you have to be up underneath these Talmudic rabbis and you have to embrace Noahide laws. And, oh, they're all excited about this new Messiah figure that Israel is announcing that even the Israelis are all divided over. No, they're, they're going to have their Messiah figure. And maybe they need a few little fakes there to kind of get people all stirred up, see how you're going to respond to it. But when they bring that demonic alien one in that can really do miracles and stuff. Boy, people are really going to fall for that one. I'm, they know telling what you're going to end up believing at that point. I'm very troubled by it. All right, so let's take a look at something here. Let's go to 2 Peter, all right? And uh, just make sure you see where we're at, 2 Peter chapter 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. When I hear messianic teachers out there telling you, you need to go underneath these Talmudic rabbis, the law is supposed to come out of Jerusalem, and when the Messiah comes, he'll straighten everything out. No, Jesus came 2,000 years ago and already straightened it out. You're perverting the word of God. That is a false prophet. And what does he say? And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil, evil spoken of. And through covetousness, they shall, they with feigned words, make merchandise of use whose judgment now for a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not, watch what he says, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them to chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the flood upon the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly and deliver just lot vexed with the filthy conversation. And notice this. He's comparing these that are in this day to the same as it was of the fallen angels. Now, might I remind you then as well, let's just go real quick then to Matthew uh, again. And we just, just jump over one chapter, Matthew 24. All right. Let me get this to do right. And we get way down here in Matthew 24. Jesus says right here, heaven and earth, now see this is very important, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. So heaven and earth is definitely going to come to nothing. But if that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. All right. Whereas in the days of Noah, they were before, excuse me, uh, but in the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the same man be. For as in the days of Noah that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage and until the day Noah entered into the ark. So the same things are going to repeat again. And no, it wasn't. It wasn't just, oh, there's promiscuity. No, it was relations between the, the humans on the earth and fallen angels. So that's all going to repeat. And this happens right about the time when God is about to destroy the heaven and the earth. So we go back to Peter. 
And we see that. And then before we go a little further in, Peter, let me just remind you, let's take you over to the book of Jude. All right. Now, what does Jude say here? Beloved, when I gave all diligence, verse three, to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. So the ones that crept in are just, he's comparing them to fallen angels as well. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, exactly what they're doing, telling you to get up under these rabbis and they're going to try to put you under some other Messiah figure. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. The angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, yet reserved into everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh, or set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That strange flesh is not homosexuality. That is, the Greek, it shows that it is with a different kind of species, especially the Hebrew, when it speaks about this over in the book, uh, the, excuse me, I forget which book it's in, Genesis, I believe, where Sodom and Gomorrah, where Lot goes down there and, and these angels come down and stuff, that strange flesh, that is a, another species. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignities. But they're compared every time to fallen angels. And that's not people back before the flesh. He's talking about those that had crept into the church already. And so Peter is saying the exact same thing. All right. That's what Peter's doing. The world then was being overflowed with water, perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved under the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day of the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but all that should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? All right. Now he's saying it's all gonna, it's gonna be burned up, right? Remember what we read in Isaiah? Okay, Isaiah chapter 34. There you go. For the Lord hath indignation against the nations and his fury against all their host. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Al Kol Hagoin. Their slain also shall be cast out. The stench of their carcasses shall come up and the mountains shall be melted with, with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall molder away and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their host shall fall down. Their host right there, Kotzavah Hashemayim. That is like, like we, uh, um, let's see, how is it? Uh, Elohim uh, Savaot, I think is one of the ways we see this in the Hebrew language, which is the, the it's like the Lord of armies. It's a, it's a, it is a heavenly host. It is fallen angels. In this case here, that host is going to fall down from the dimensions that these archons live in. That's why they come down to this earth. That's why you're seeing what's happening now and these demonic entities. And they're talking about uh, these aliens and things like that. It's not aliens, it's just devils. But they're running out of places to be at. Remember, we read in the scripture the other day how that there was no more place found for them. Why? It's being destroyed. And he goes on. And all the hosts of heaven shall motor away, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth from the vine, and as a falling fig from a fig tree. For my sword hath drunk its fill in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edom and upon the people of my band to judgment. Wow. So it goes from the heaven of what's happening down to the earth for the judgment. Um, 
So this is what Peter's talking about. It's what Jude is talking about. It's what Isaiah is talking about. It's what Malachi, for example, speaks about as well. Remember what, that you're seeing verses 20 through 24, et cetera, things like that. Uh, actually from verse 19 in the King James Bible is verse uh, is chapter four. So it'd be verse one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. But anyway, for behold, the day cometh, it, it burneth as a furnace and all the proud and all that do that work wickedness shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall set them ablaze at the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. All right. The root is Satan himself that has brought up his own Nephilim archon diseased children, you might call it. And the branches are, of course, the children themselves. Just like Christ said, he is the he is the, the vine. We are the branches. He is the root of Jesse, for example. All right. So there is the good tree. Even Jesus says, I planted among you a goodly tree. How have you turned to be a degenerate tree? They became a degenerate tree because they mingled their seed with these these demonic beings. First, the house of Israel does it, and then the house of Judah does it. And we find that out in the book of Ezra, where the priests and Levites were chief among them. No wonder why we see the scripture says, Jesus says there are a bunch of serpents and vipers. And according to the Hebrew Matthew, uh, of, of one version there, I forget which one that is there, but it actually says that they are a genealogy of serpents. So all these things we're seeing in here, we're seeing all, all these different places. Even in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, as we read the other day, right? And I focused on three verses I really wanted you to see. Let me just kind of re-put those three verses before you highlighted, say, in green here, so you can really see this. Because he sets, he sets the order. Let's start with verse 24, Hebrews chapter 10. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love, unto good works, not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the manner of some is. This whole thing about this, you know, thing they got going on with their so-called sicknesses and stuff right now is what the government has used around the world to ban your services of gathering together. All right, now, most of these are just a bunch of, uh, you know, Masonic lodges anyway, if you really want to get down to it, but it affects the true believers as well. But he says on there, so it shows that that's going to have come. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. But what day is he talking about approaching? That's in verse 27. The day that's approaching is a certain fearful looking for judgment of a fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Just like we just read in all these other books here, in Isaiah, in Malachi, in uh, second, uh, excuse me, Second Peter, and as well as in the book of Jude. But he says in verse twenty six, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Now that knowledge of the truth is because the entire premise of the book of Hebrews practically, especially from chapter six forward, is the Melchizedek priesthood. It is a new covenant. It is the old covenant uh, being done away with, and that was done away through Christ, establishing the new covenant for us that we have today, which clearly uh, is Christ fulfilling that scripture there. So he says, if you sin willfully after you've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So if you go back in, because right now the time is set, it's at a time where they're going to forsake the assembly of together. It's at a time when you know that destruction is coming from a fiery indignation. And we're hearing all this talk about meteorites and things like that that could happen. And I know some people believe it. Some people don't. That's okay. But I showed you just recently in the Dead Sea Scrolls how that the Dead Sea Scrolls talk about the earth is going to be destroyed. And it's, it's citing as if it were citing Malachi. Because it talks about right before the coming of Elijah when the earth would be destroyed with power, lightning, and meteorites. Okay? But, it's, but, but now we have on there that shows you that time frame, shows you that it's going to be destroyed like that. But then he tells you, if you sin willfully, if you receive the knowledge of the truth, the knowledge of the truth was Jesus Christ came and he was the new covenant and the old covenant was passed away. But at this very time, as all this is happening, there is these 
false prophets that have entered into the uh, church that are trying to put you back underneath the law. And so therefore, there will remain no more sacrifice for your sins because you go under the law, you're going to go under judgment. As he also says in Hebrews 10, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Oh, how much more sore punishment suppose you shall be, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of, of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath despite unto the spirit of grace. So when you go back under the law, you are counting the blood of Christ an unholy thing. That's why it's an unpardonable sin. But that only can be fulfilled in the day you're living in now. All right. So we go back real quick to 2 Peter. Let's look at what he says here. He delivered just lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. All right. Let's drop down to verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Again, it's talking about that day where everything's burned off and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. <laughs> having eyes full of adultery and they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. Why is it talking about the adultery? The adultery is that sexual relations that they're doing with fallen angels. And a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. The only cursed children were the Nephilim children. Otherwise, there's a possibility of redemption regardless. The cursed children are your Nephilim, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the sons of Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but as was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb ass speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever." When they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those who are clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, is what they're promising you today, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, the same is brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, same thing as written in Hebrews. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog has turned to his own vomit again and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Just like Hebrews 10 says. Just the exact same type of verbiage. They went back. They went back. And it's just, just horrible. Right? Very, very horrible. Um, let me see real quick. Okay. And then in chapter three, let me just share with you what he says here. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto the Fire against the dead judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Okay, you see there now? Again, we're coming to a fiery judgment very soon. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day as with the Lord is a thousand years. We read that already. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Why would he, why would Peter say we look for a new heaven and a new earth? Did you forget that Jesus said that uh, you know, I won't leave you comfortless, but I'll go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found in him peace without spot and blameless. But sadly, people are not looking for this anymore. Why? They've been deceived. 
And on account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, you see, here you go. Paul's not a false prophet. Our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in his epistles, speaking in them these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also other scriptures unto their own destruction. So the ones that bring in all this damnable doctrines about Paul are just following along this Nephilim demonic devils that are bringing out all this nonsense. Oh, yeah, yeah, friends. Let me just quickly, we're going to close here now. Um, there again, that was Malachi. We read that for you just a moment ago there. And then uh, John, in the Gospel of John chapter 15, I am the true vine, my father is the husband. Every branch that he beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, and that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, I in he, same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Again, as speaking of the judgment, it's a little, a little more subtle, but that's exactly what it is. And I think we've already touched on all these other ones here in Matthew 24. Yeah, the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Jesus is already telling you it's going to happen, right? And we already did Isaiah. We already did the book of Psalms there, right? Um, Foundation of earth and the heavens are works of thy hands and they shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Right? <laughs> There, there, there's this word right here. That is a, that is the only way you can translate that. Hima, Yobedu is, it's just a, it's the complete end of this earth. It's just totally done. Everything is done, it's over, it's completed, right? So when, when it says here, when the thousand years, or in this case here, when that undetermined space of time of years expired, because Nobody really knew. Jesus said, no man, no man in heaven, not even the angels, knew when that time was going to come. Satan shall be loosed out of this prison. Well, he's being loosed right now. Cast down, he has a short time, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are on the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breath, notice that, they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. That's not some place off out in the future, friends. That day is rapidly approaching us right now. And this is what I'm trying to get you to see. I sure hope you will. Let's see. Let us know what Oh, it's already talking about the rain, we know, because we're already reigning with Christ now. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. And uh, listen, don't forget, you can watch these videos also on our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org, uh, and our many other platforms. You can see these on when I have one like this where I'm able to put it here on YouTube. I put it on YouTube for you so that it makes it a little bit easier. Patreon, uh, please support our Patreon channel. Occasionally I do put in some videos there. Uh, they're there all the time, but I put in, slip in some that I haven't loaded here. Uh, just a little inside information that's being shared with me and stuff. And I like to share that with our, our listeners over on Patreon. And uh, if God lays it on your heart to support the work we do, right here at the top right-hand side of the page, you can either buy mail, uh, uh, contribute to the ministry, or you can just click right there and it sends you to a link there where you can actually donate there uh, via online. So we thank you for your love and your kindness of the work we do here. And uh, I'll actually probably do news this evening. I was planning on doing it this morning, but I got quite a bit of things I need to take care of today. Uh, so <clears throat> had to come check on my dad. He's not been doing too well here lately. So anyway, thank you uh, for your love and your support for the work we do here. I'm Stephen Benoon with the Noon Institute and Israeli News Live. Good evening.